We're coming up on mid-June, and it's been kind of a slow spring, so I was sashaying out to my hoop house a couple days ago, eager to see how much my plants had exploded with some of the good weather we've had recently. My husband and I live out here in a rural area in Michigan, and we try to grow as much of our own food as we can in our own 26 by 36 foot hoop house. Ah, the kale's looking good. The cucumbers are twice the size they were yesterday. Look at all those potatoes. Hey, but what's on those potatoes? Sure enough, I found some kind of stripy looking humpback beetle hunkering down on the leaves getting ready to have dinner. So I ran back to the house and turned on the Google machine so I could find out what these guys were. And I learned that sprinkle of bugs on the leaves of my potato plants were Colorado potato beetles. Aptly named because it is clear that they really do love to eat the leaves on potato plants. An organic site said all you have to do is pick them off the leaves, put them in a pot of soapy water, and life will be good again. Yeah, I wasn't all that thrilled about the idea of having to touch the little guys, but you know, they weren't as creepy as I thought and they were fairly easy to get off the leaves, so I put them into this little plastic pot I have. And I had learned that one of the ways you do this is to put them in that soapy water. I'm assuming that drowns them so they can't get out of the pot. Another guy who seemed like he was really waging war on these guys suggested you put them in a coffee can, douse them with lighter fluid, put it at the end of your driveway and torch them. I wasn't about to use a flamethrower on these guys, and I may not be a Buddhist, but I wasn't all that keen on killing them. So I took them back to the house, and I released them, sort of an insect version of catch and release. Problem solved, I figured. Well, I went back out to the hoop house yesterday, expecting to see my potatoes thriving, but yee. Now my plants were covered with gazillions of wriggling black and red things. Oh, God, they were ugly. They looked like ladybugs had been spending the night and mating with grubs. And they were really turning the leaves into lace. So it was another mad dash back to the Google machine where I found out these are the pupa of those hard-shelled beetles. So I figured I'd have to learn all I could about these guys. I got some good information from the College of Ag at the University of Kentucky about the life cycle of these beetles. Turns out that the big guys with the stripes down that hardback shell, those are the adults and they overwinter in the soil. So in the spring, as they begin to come back to life, what they can do is they can actually start eating the parts of the potato plant that are below ground. And they don't do that much damage to the leaves themselves, but as they crawl up the stems, they can do what's called stemming, where they start biting through the stems and actually the plants can sort of fall over if they get a little bit too ambitious. But those female beetles lay orange and yellow eggs in a batch of about two dozen or so on the back side of those leaves. And now different sites give different figures, but somewhere between, say, 350 and 500 eggs is what they can produce over a four to five week period. And it only takes about four to nine days before those larvae come out and then they start really munching on those potato leaves. This larval stage lasts two to three weeks and the little guys like to eat in groups and boy, they can just buzz through potato leaves fast. Then what happens is they go back into the ground to pupate again and then it takes another five to 10 days before that adult emerges. Then they go into that egg laying, laying cycle again. You know, it can take them around 21 days to start doing that. So if you begin to notice those guys coming on in your garden, by the end of the summer, you could have two and maybe sometimes three of those cycles of those beetles coming on at the same time. In fact, at a certain point, you're going to have all those different stages munching on your leaves together. Now, a very nice website that I ran into from the University of Kentucky was really aimed at commercial growers. And frankly, one of the reasons I grow so many potatoes is that I know in order to get rid of things like the Colorado potato beetle, commercial growers throw a hell of a lot of chemicals at their potatoes. And I frankly don't want chemicals on my food. So I took a look at the kinds of things that commercial growers use on them, and they use organophosphates like imidin and disistin. They can, they've also tried pyrethroids, chlorinated hydrocarbons, insect growth regulators, chloronicotinols. They say that the spinadad and abamectins are still effective, but the one thing I learned is that these beetles really pretty quickly become resistant to all of these kind of chemicals that the commercial growers try to throw at them. One site that I found said rotenone still works, but Lord knows for how long. So I was looking for some more cultural or biological ways to con try to control these, more organic ways. Diluted neem oil, that's another organic or natural type spray that you can use. They say that the neem oil doesn't really kill the beetle, but it makes them less likely to want to chew on the leaves. 
The other chemical that's natural that you can use is Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's available as a spray. It's not terribly effective on the adults, they say. And one of the things that you can do is try to get these naturally opposing biological predators into your garden. They suggest green lace wings, ladybugs, stink bugs, spiders, even some kinds of flies. But I've read in other places that maybe that isn't all that effective. And obviously it's not going to be an immediate quick fix when these little guys are munching down on your leaves already. Crop rotation can help. So you're going to want to make sure that you don't plant potato after potato. Uh, when you do crop rotation, they say that you must be 200 yards away from where they were grown before. So that sort of gave me a ballpark figure, too, about how far I was going to have to take these beetles away in order to keep them from coming back into my garden. Mulching can also help. They also suggest that you plant a quick growing variety of potatoes after those adults have emerged. So you wait in the spring until after those big guys have come and gone and you start to get the population under control and then you put your potatoes in. The University of Minnesota, which deals with a climate similar to mine here in Michigan, recommends that you remove the kinds of things that alternate food sources for these little guys, nightshade and ground cherry. If you find those growing near your garden, remove them as a possible food source. Probably one of the bigger fears that I had was I was reading from the University of Rhode Island that they are now producing GMO potatoes. Genetically modified organisms have now, they're in potatoes, and they're making those available for both home gardeners and also for commercial growers. Not only do I worry about what a GMO potato might be doing to my gut, my concern is that we've seen over time that as they build these super resistant weeds that go up against GMO crops, we may be building super resistant bugs. And based on how I went out there just a few hours ago to take a look at my potatoes, oh my goodness, even all the work I put in yesterday, the little guys are back. You know, they cluster, looking like little black dots in some place in the brackets of the leaves. And then those red and black guys, the kind of grubby looking guys, are busy running around and they're the ones that really do the damage. And there's a few adults out there, so clearly I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of the summer. I'm going to be spending a lot of time out there, creepy as it may be, flicking those little guys into a plastic container and taking them far away from the hoop house. So I've been thinking lately, what I might do is I might put them in that container and drive them down to the capital. I heard there's quite a few pests down there as well. Maybe they'll find some fellow travelers.